Hello coaches, welcome back to another Modern Soccer Coach Breakdown. This week we take a look at ways that you can be more specific around positional training. We're going to look at four different training exercises you can work on different positions and how you can incorporate them into your training program. If you enjoy it, please give it a like and if you want the details of these exercises, please check them out on the link below where we've also just released a new Modern Soccer Coach positional training package. We've got over 30 exercises broken down in positions and situations you can also get that on the link below okay four different training exercises with different positions let's go before you introduce positional training i believe that it's really really important to get a collective understanding of those roles and responsibilities and the situations that players are going to find themselves in that can be designed alongside the game model. If you want a little bit of help with your game model, we've got an upcoming webinar. You can check that on the link below as well. When you're doing the exercises, yes, there's a high levels of repetition, but always, always, I think it's important to prioritize quality over quantity. It's not something to replace the training program. It's something to support the training program. So alongside training loads, you've got to have an awareness as well. And always you're trying to build confidence with players in those specific situations, which tailors to a more individualized and detailed approach to training. So let's look at some ways we can do that with positional training. All right, the first we're going to start with is center backs. Again, we talked about being specific in types of situations. Let's just say you're a coach that's looking at improving the defender's ability to step in and read the pass into a forward in that number nine or inside channel. This exercise here, two center backs, four and five, inside playing area with two mannequins and a mini goal. As soon as the server passes the ball left or right to one of the players, the center back is looking to read the forward pass into the mannequin and step in front. Again, they're not guessing there early, they're reading it, so it's about timing, getting there in front. After winning the ball then, you also want them to be comfortable playing forward. Maybe it's a moment of transition that you want to take advantage of. So again, it's a pass into the mini goal. So it's timing of moving at the right time, anticipating the pass. When the pass is played in, it's about stepping in front and then it's about completing the pass in transition and getting repetition doing that there. You can also progress it where it's a diagonal pass, but again, it's about reading it and stepping in at the right time and getting comfortable and confident in that movement. All right, moving now to fallbacks. Of course, fallbacks have so much expectations in the build and in the attack today when they're attacking fallbacks, particularly 4-3-3, 4-2-3-1 system. So in this one here, we're going to have two different actions. There's going to be a server playing the ball to the fallback who's looking at playing into a central midfielder and an inside pass and a mini goal or diagonally into a center forward. After the first ball is played, the fullback then continues the run for the second ball. It's played from the server into a forward. And now you're working on two different units. You've got the forward involved as well. Lays the ball now to the attacking fullback, who's then crossing for the forward to finish. So two different actions. Ball one served into a fullback to play into a mini goal, more of a possession exercise. Ball two, more of an attacking action where they're getting in the final third and crossing in for a forward as well. Again, specific in how you want your fullback to play, but a good way to build practice in the possession and in the attack. All right, our next position looks at the defensive midfielder, the holding midfielder. This time you're going to work on more of an individual exercise. This time you're going to look at angles and speed of play. So it's a server playing in to the number six, and then a number is called. The number reflects one of the mini goals, and then obviously that requires a different skill set. So if the numbers one or two are called, then it's a one-touch layoff, set back like you would in a game. And if it's three or four called, then you're looking for the player to open up. So that would require two touches. Again, game speed, so you're trying to encourage them to play quickly. This would be maximum speed, 90 seconds, and you're trying to get five or six of those passes in where it's short and sharp, but the quality is always high and the player is confident in the positions and in the angles of play and in the speed of play. Hello coaches, we'll take a quick break here. If you enjoy these positional training exercises and you're looking for more ideas, we've just released a new MSC positional training resource which allows you to effectively plan and implement positional training alongside your game model. 30 plus exercises all split into positional categories 
and they're all in a presentation so you've got the video alongside them easily adapted to give players different pictures experiences challenges and they're also a space for the coach to look at the work and adapt to suit to a specific game style or a specific formation you can order it on the link below you get the link right away you get the powerpoint right away with all the videos really good resource to give you some more ideas with positional training and then this exercise looks at the wide forward sevens eleven, specifically looking at the timing of out to in runs so this time you've got a few players involved in the final third the central player starts by dribbling through the cone the first wide forward arcs the run underneath the back line and then arrives in front of the mannequins to lay the ball off at that moment the second forward times the run to complete the pass from the central player behind the mannequins so a little bit of movement a little bit of appreciation of how to work together and again looking at linking this training up into what you want specifically with attacking units in the game is the goal so a good way to communicate that movement and the timing of players as well in the final third so there you go coaches, just some ideas around positional training or how to implement into a training program. Going back to the initial slide with objectives, I think if these are aligned with your game model, you've got a really, really good chance of impacting as in transferring this training into the game itself. The other piece of it, which I think is really important, is the repetition part and your increase in confidence, individualizing your training program somewhat because game models are particularly more of a team concept. So sometimes it's difficult to get players that repetition that they may require in those moments. So it's a good way to finish the training session. Maybe you don't have six coaches to work around and organize and help you, but that's okay. The resource is designed to give you some ideas that if you just have five players here and there, and you can use that as a coach to try and connect, again, game models to training, but also connecting with players individually, getting a bit of feedback and seeing how they're feeling in the system also has a lot of value as well. So if you want more information, please again, check it out on the link below. We've got the new resource available now. You can download your copy right away. Big fan of positional training. Love to see it implemented in an environment. I think it's got a great, great deal of value. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next week. Goodbye.